Hello and good morning or good evening or wherever in your day you are. Um, we are going to cover something which is called nucleus and n particles today. Uh, it's such a complex uh, uh, system with deep within Maya that uh, we will only touch the surface, but I give you a basic uh, overview of uh, what the system is built of and uh, how to go on from there. And uh, in the second part of the tutorial, we'll open uh, an example uh, which is uh, coming with Maya, and um, we'll try to understand a little bit of it, uh, how it works. Uh, okay, let's create a new scene. And when you go to FX here, you see the menu N particles. That's what we're interested in. Now, what you've just seen, the spreading of particles in the scene, was created by using this. It's called legacy particles. That's the particles from the past. Uh, when I create an emitter, it just emits in all directions. Yeah. For a start, it's always good to change the playback range for the animation for which is actually a simulation now uh, to a much larger number uh, if you type it into this field here instead of 120 you type 1000 for example um, the whole animation spreads uh, to 1000 which is uh, nice to have okay we'll um, we'll need the outliner um, now from now and then and uh, you can switch it on and off here and we have two objects here which we'll delete now because we go back to n particles and we'll create the new the n particle emitter and that's that one we had this one under legacy and now we create an emitter here we have create options which we'll ignore for now but for later you may find them helpful because they're kind of provide a shortcut but we can do the same things uh, by using this one okay it has a slightly different icon and it does completely different things you see the particles flow to the uh, to the to the ground and uh, forever so to say they um, fall down we can uh, raise the emitter is selected here we can raise the emitter and the particles will spread out here. Now let's go to the attribute editor. In the attribute editor we have three things. One is the emitter. It's the thing which emits these little dots. Then we have the particle shape. Actually it's n particle shape. And then we have the nucleus. Let's go to the nucleus. Whenever you do a simulation in a scene uh, a nucleus is being created because it drives the uh, dynamics mathematically. Uh, if you disable it, it won't do anything anymore. See, nothing is happening. So the nucleus is the heart of the whole thing. It uh, plants a gravity into the scene. The gravity currently is 9.8. If I change it to minus 9, of course you see what's happening. The particles flow up so the nucleus is the heart of the simulation you can have an air density in the whole scene which dampens or dampens less you have can, can have a wind speed a wind direction the wind noise which means uh, it's not steady in one direction all the, all the time so that's the nucleus when you create a second emitter or an object emitting particles or a soft body uh, object they will be uh, under the same nucleus here. So they participate in the same simulation system. They have the same gravity, the same wind, etc. Makes total sense. Now let's go to the particle shape, n particle shape. There's a lot of things here. And the first thing is quite uninteresting. Let's open this tab here, count. It tells us currently we see 174 particles. Well, we can always check when the computer gets very slow uh, why it gets very slow. Here we have the lifespan. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it um, tells us the particles currently live forever, but we could change it to a constant time or a random range. 
uh, and the par uh, or lifespan per particle. So we can say particle 160 should live shorter than uh, all the others. Use the particle size. It doesn't matter um, what particle size we have here because we have little dots and the dots uh, will stay small. Uh, the interesting thing for a start to make the particles sort of more sexy is shading. And under shading you have the particle render type. That's the way the particles are being rendered. Uh, instead of tiny dots, which are always tiny and white, Arnold renders them, the Maya renderer renders them all right, you can change them from points to multipoints, for example. So each point has a subset of points. Um, um, you can do a multi-streak. You see they have a streaking uh, thing now. But what, what we are interested in is the spheres. And here we have spheres and now uh, we want to give the f spheres uh, a color. It's right here. Currently it's white. So let's give it a light blue color, color like this. Yeah. Um, and now I have nice color. I could give uh, it other colors and opacities, make them uh, shine through a little bit. Uh, that's all sitting under n particle shape. It's the shape of each particle and it's now set to spheres. Um, let's go back to the nucleus for a second because we have a little interesting thing here. It says ground plane. Yes, we'll use the ground plane and see the difference in the animation. The particles sort of stick to the ground plane and they, what do they actually do? They make a whole mud of particles here. Um, what happens if I tell the particles to separate from each other. We can do that under collisions here. We're, we have to do with the particle shape. And under collisions we have self-collide. Self-collide means each particle should watch out if there's a, another particle close to it and keep a safe distance. The animation without self-collide looks like this. We've seen that before. And the animation with self-collide looks totally different. And since they have to self-collide, they're building a pile now. They're piling up. Now we get an n-particle example. There are several examples coming with Maya. Here you see the folder under FX, the n-particle examples. You should not have to navigate there. It should be there by default. And let's pick this one, the Reaction Diffusion MA. That's a Maya project. Uh, double click it and it loads into the scene. You see instantly that there's a camera here and that means uh, the folks who created that scene have provided us with a camera which has a nice view of the whole uh, animation. And uh, I press the space bar, I go to the top window and now I press and hold the space bar, go to panels and I want to see uh, the scene through the uh, the extra camera. It's called a reaction diffusion reaction diffusion camera. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Let's play the animation. So that's the animation from the ordinary perspective view. And let's uh, change the animation or simulation range here to a thousand like we did before. Let's start it again. So
So what we see is we see first the red dots fall onto the into that box and then the blue ones fall into the box and then they obviously self collide between each other, the red ones uh, see the blue ones and don't collide with them, but within each color they do mix. And as the simulation goes on, this kind of gluey, semi-liquid dough keeps moving just a little bit. It's still animating and we're here at frame 800 now, so the simulation is still going on. Um, I want you to load that scene into your Maya system uh, just the way I did it and have a look at, here is the outliner, this little um, uh, option box here. Is it called an option box, this icon? Um, and now you can search for things which do what. And I just give you a hint. Under reaction diffusion p cube what do we have here it's not an interesting object but i tell you what the two things do it consists of two uh, polygon objects and uh, this one is the emitter that's why the particles fall such a short distance into the box and of course we can raise that emitter and then they fall a longer distance and we can scale the emitter like this and you know what's happening now yeah and finally I'd like to find out where the colors come from the red and the blue now we have reaction diffusion n particle 1 and n particle 2 and I guess that's the two of them and uh, that's n particle shape 2 we have shading here it's still open from our previous thing and uh, here is the color so when we turn this to yellow the red bubbles will turn yellow or green or a dark blue well what happens if I pick the whole system that's the emitter here and the box where the where the balls fall into press the key E to invoke the rotation Here's the rotation icon. You could use that as well, but I press the short key E when you rotate this into two directions. Well, I won't play the simulation now because you can do it. <laughs> 